Prepare to have your health questions answered here on Safe, Effective, Natural Solutions with Dr. Todd Binkley, owner of Binkley Healing Center in downtown Ventura. Now, here's Dr. Todd. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Todd Binkley, board-certified doctor of non-force chiropractic and practitioner of functional medicine. Functional medicine means using standard diagnostic tests that any doctor can do, but most doctors don't because usually your insurance doesn't want to pay for them, but it's more affordable than you might imagine to get a result that if you're in a situation where some doctors told you there's nothing wrong with you or there's nothing that can be done, there often is by improving your diet, exercising, and supplementing nutrients where identified on diagnostic evidence-based testing. The focus of today's talk is again going to be Alzheimer's, the fourth in a series of shows I've done about dementia in general. And at the end of the show, time permitting, I'm going to talk about some things, some specific things that anyone can do to have a fighting chance to give your to heal your brain and to give your body a fighting chance to avoid the devastating effects that happen when your brain deteriorates, when you lose blood flow to your brain, when you lose brain cells. And the most exciting research into this realm that's come out in the past few years and more recently published in November 2023 in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease is the, the Bredesen Protocol. Dr. Dale Bredesen has been studying and developing a much better model for treating people with dementia and more importantly, preventing and reversing dementia because most people wait until it's too late. So the problem is standard clinical trials have a single predetermined treatment modality, meaning there's a pharmaceutical company typically that develops a drug to treat and try to remove one specific type of basically scar tissue for, from your brain like beta amyloid plaque or neurofibrillary tangles the problem, as Dr. Bredesen states it, and by the way, who is Dr. Bredesen? Dale Bredesen, MD, is an internationally recognized neurologist with special expertise in the mechanisms of neurogenerative diseases. He's the Senior Director of Precision Brain Health at Pacific Neuroscience Institute and the Chief Scientific Officer at Apollo Health. He's a neuroscientist, professor, and author of several books in the field of neurodegenerative diseases, and he's developed and directed over 30 years of laboratory research focused on the mechanisms underlying neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. And you can read that on his website just like I just did. The point is, his work is really amazing. No one else has figured out a way to actually reverse dementia. The standard drug trials that basically govern what everyone is currently being treated for, everyone in America throughout the Western world, most of the world who has dementia is being treated with pharmaceutical drugs that don't work because they're only trying to treat one tiny aspect of a complex condition that has at least 200 contributory factors and dozens of known and well-researched components that are addressable if you address all of them at the same time and not just one of them with a drug that has side effects and doesn't even work for its targeted effect. Where 400 clinical trials have failed to demonstrate a sustained clinical effect. The best they can do is not show any cognitive improvement at all, but or even stabilization of the dementia, but merely reduce the rate of the progression by maybe a third for a few years. Is that really good enough? I, I don't think so, and Dr. Bredesen doesn't think so either. So a study entitled Precision Medicine for Approach to Alzheimer's Disease Successful Pilot Project uses a more comprehensive evaluation of each patient's genetics and biomarkers to try and figure out and optimize a personalized precision medicine protocol for each. And so this was a study led by three integrative physicians, Dr. Kat Toops, Dr. Anne Hathaway, and Deborah Gordon, along with Dr. Bredesen. As mentioned in previous episodes, I have had the privilege of seeing live presentations given by Dr. Toops, Dr. Hathaway, and Dr. Bredesen earlier 
this year, just a few weeks ago, in fact. And their proof-of-concept trial included 25 participants aged 50 to 76, all with mild cognitive impairment, pre-Alzheimer's, or early-stage dementia. And each patient was assessed for multiple potential contributors, such as inflammation, insulin resistance, nutrient and hormonal deficiencies, and specific pathogens, toxins, and genetics, and then treated with a personalized protocol that was continued for nine months. So this proof-of-concept trial with 25% participants was published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2022, but it began in 2012, and 21 of the 25, 84%, showed significant improvement And they still have less cognitive impairment and dementia than when they started the program over 10 years ago. Their MRI scans show that after nine months, instead of an expected 2.2% shrinkage that average people have of total gray matter, the part of the brain where memories are stored, their gray matter actually grew by 0.3% per year. And most importantly, shrinkage of the hippocampus The hippocampus is the file clerk part of the brain that often goes bad first, which causes this inability to store new memories. The hippocampus improved by 63% in the people on this protocol. So study participants had brain MRI scans at the start of the study and after nine months, and they were evaluated by special software that evaluates, and I I don't want to go too much into this detail, but the bottom line is they're documenting this both with blood tests and with the standard questionnaires that neurologists use to evaluate cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's blood tests, the questionnaires, and MRI scans that actually show changes in the brain on the scan. So one of the lead authors on the study, Dr. Kat Toops, noted, quote, I have been principal investigator on more than 20 long-term clinical trials for patients with mild cognitive impairment and dementia, where the benchmark for success was merely slowing cognitive decline. This trial is the first to show actual improvement in multiple domains of functioning, as well as improvements on MRI brain scans. This is incredible, and most people are never going to hear about it because it's not yet part of the practice of standard medicine. Most neurologists don't do this. Most neurologists don't even know about this because they're just focused on the standard practice of conventional medicine. One drug for one condition, cross your fingers, hope it works, even though 400 times It's failed. It fails almost every time because there is no single cause for dementia. It's caused by so many different things. And so if you just identify a half a dozen or even better, a dozen of the most common causes of insult to the brain, loss of blood flow, insufficient nutrients, etc., amazing things can happen, including not just the slowing of dementia, but reversal So addressing these root causes and this type of functional medicine approach has previously led to the publication of a case study called Reversal of Cognitive Decline, 100 Patients. Uh, Email me if you would like uh, the copy of that study. It was published in 2018 in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and Parkinsonism, and it outlines the progress of patients in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s over several years on the protocol at six different sites around the country. A larger randomized controlled trial is currently seeking participants at sites in Miami, Cleveland, Nashville, Sacramento, and the Sacramento Bay, San Francisco, pardon me, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, re- currently recruiting, still recruiting uh, patients for an ongoing trial. To find out more about this, go to Dementia Reversal Trial. Dot com. So this, this currently ongoing randomized controlled trial at six sites around the country, to find out more about that and perhaps even enroll in it, go to DementiaReversalTrial.com. I'm Dr. Todd Binkley. You're listening to Safe, Effective, Natural Solutions to Almost Any Health Challenge. Today we're talking about actually reversing dementia. 
Dr. Anne Hathaway, one of the co-authors on the study with Dr. Bredesen, commented, quote, With this precision medicine approach, I've witnessed person after person regain lost brain function, get back to their life's work, reestablish friendships, or start new creative activities. It's very gratifying to share this success publicly. Can you imagine a world where Alzheimer's is a rare disease? Well, a lot of things would ha- will have to change for that to happen. But the point is, it's possible, not just theoretical, but actually proven with scientific dated data. I, I, Alzheimer's dementia is a, a form of chronic encephalitis, inflammation of the brain that, re- that represents a response to various insults. So the goal is is, with the Bredesen Protocol, to identify and address all the factors associated with this complex phenomena. And it involves several things. Number one, improve blood flow to the brain with better food, exercise, and supplements. And I'm going to come back to the specifics of each of these in a moment. Number two, reverse diabetes and prediabetes, mainly with better food, exercise, and Sometimes supplements can help with this. Number three, test for cholesterol and other lesser known and even worse bad fats and reduce them without drugs, without taking statins, Lipitor, Torvastatin, Simvastatin, etc. Number four, maximize provision of essential nutrients to the brain. Most doctors never even think about this. When you maximize essential nutrients to the brain with proper testing, for specific deficiencies and eating better food and mostly considering a host of very well-researched and relatively new supplements that most people have never heard of, amazing things can happen. And it's different for everyone. I can't make any promises, but for people that are looking for something they can do in a situation where no one else is helping them, I've seen some really fascinating things happen. Number five, test for inflammation and reduce it with better food, exercise, and supplements. We're all subject to causes of inflammation, and these things can be tested for and treated without drugs. Number six, test for autoimmune conditions and reverse them. Also, obviously, with better food, exercise, and supplements. Drugs for autoimmune conditions are essential for people with severe autoimmune conditions, but they don't often work much better than the drugs for cognitive decline in Alzheimer's. Number seven, test for chronic infections like tick-borne diseases, diseases, viruses, and bad bacteria in your gut and treat them with nutrients and sometimes, when necessary, medications. Sometimes you do need an antibiotic or an antiviral or uh, some other kind of drug to kill off a bug and your gut, but you don't know that unless you test for it. And and that's not the most, certainly not the most common contributor to Alzheimer's disease. It's just something that Dr. Bredesen has included because if someone, everyone is different. You're as different on the inside as you are on the outside. And one of these things could be a major contributor to your condition. Number eight, test for toxins that all of us are exposed to to varying degrees. Heavy metals like lead, mercury, uranium, cadmium, arsenic, chemical toxins like pesticides and chemical fertilizers that we all breathe in from conventional farms nearby that end up in our drinking water. Mold toxins that end up stored in our bodies throughout our lives, even from brief exposures to some mold that you maybe saw or maybe never even saw in your home garage, workplace, whatever. And then once identified, establish a specific protocol for helping your body flush out these toxins safely and effectively. So it's understandable if you've been listening closely to all of those elements of the Bredesen protocol, your head might be spinning now. Oh my God, who could do all of that? Well, it depends on your motivation your age, and what's possible for you. Everyone is different. So that's the whole point of getting 
precision medicine, getting a personalized evaluation. So if you come to see me, I'm not going to recommend all of those things for every single patient. That's uh, something that Dr. Bredesen has been able to do and get dramatic results for. But it's important to understand that even those eight things that I just talked about to review, improve blood flow to the brain, reverse prediabetes and diabetes, improve cholesterol and other bad fats, maximize provision provision of essential nutrients to the brain, test for inflammation and reduce it, test for autoimmune conditions and reverse them if possible, test for chronic infections and treat them, and test for toxins. So not everybody needs all of those things. These are things that functional medicine practitioners address in every patient that comes to our office every day, starting with a simple case history. So no one needs necessarily, no one on the protocol, on the Bredesen protocol got all of those things. No one needs all of those things. The point is, it, precision medicine means treating the patient, not the disease. Uh, identifying what a particular person in front of you is missing, what's preventing their brain from healing and repairing itself, what's possible to facilitate the reversal of dementia in this person versus the standard medical protocols that are used to develop all the dis- all the d- useless drugs that people are taking for Alzheimer's that create very temporary slight improvements and no long-term benefit. Their goal for a lot of these testings are stated as slowing decline. Who wants to slow the decline? If you want to reverse it, it basically means taking better care of your health in specific ways, which can be identified. Number one, this is the point of seeing a practitioner of functional medicine. The most important test you do is meeting with someone who does anything other than conventional medical practice and just prescribing you a drug. Go to a functional medicine practitioner and get a good case history and some basic blood tests. That's the starting point. So simple blood tests and a good case history can identify what you might need to improve blood flow to your brain and reverse prediabetes and diabetes and your lipid profile, your cholesterol levels. And there's a whole bunch, a whole host of other fats. I don't want to get too much into that. I covered it last month in the cardiovascular podcast, but there's a bunch of other bad fats. Cholesterol is not a very good test of your heart health or your brain health or any other aspect of your health. There are much better tests that most doctors don't do. They're widely available. We'll come back to that or send me an email. Number four, maximize the provision of essential nutrients to the brain. So this is the most important. So the first three, you know, most doctors do some of that. Most doctors will prescribe, you know, tell you to eat better and exercise. Good, that often doesn't help that much. Uh, Most doctors will put you on metformin or some other drug to help you with diabetes or prediabetes. And most doctors will put you on a statin drug to lower your total and bad cholesterol. But you know those. What's the what's the verdict on that? That it's not it's not that great. So maximizing the provision of essential nutrients to your brain is huge. It just it just makes sense. Your bloodstream is a river of life. Construction projects are there's crews waiting on both riverbanks. Just imagine this. Go with me on this metaphor. There's a river of life with construction crews on both banks waiting for the materials necessary to heal and repair things that are obviously need repair. But if the materials to do the job are not available, then that project just just gets put on hold indefinitely. This is what happens with loss of brain tissue. So when you flood your brain, when you flood your river of life, when you flood your bloodstream with nutrients that make their way to the brain to provide it with the nutrients it needs to heal and repair itself. Even people in their 80s, you know, it's, I, I, I only say that because so many people show up in their 80s when they have severe dementia in my office. I'm trying to get you to tell people who are in their 50s and 60s or even earlier to come in and get tested to find out when we can really get amazing results and re- completely reverse the devastating effects of dementia. 
I'll come back to a couple of important tests that we can do that with. But just to finish the list here, not everyone has an autoimmune condition. Not everyone has chronic infections and not everyone has, well, actually everyone does have toxins, but whether or not they have enough of them to contribute to mild cognitive impairment or dementia is different for everybody. So those last three things are based on testing and that Bredesen protocol is based on testing. So if you come to see me, I will, there are ways that I can find out when you come to see me with a simple case history and some kinesiology or muscle testing can give me a good idea which tests would be most important for you or someone you are concerned about. Most people wait till they have symptoms, till they have memory loss, till they have some of the other symptoms of dementia. And this is just normal human behavior. I don't want to, you know, I'm not trying to blame anybody for this. This is what we all do. But I'm just trying to encourage you to start earlier. If you have a family history of dementia, definitely get tested early. Get the APOE gene test, which you can get through LabCorp or Quest for seven or $800, or maybe you can get your insurance to cover it if you can get any doctor affiliated with your insurance company to order it for you, or you can get it for 150 bucks through 23andMe. And even more importantly, well, or as importantly, there's a, there's a relatively new test, or at least the research on it, substantiating its value, was just published in the Journal of the American Medical Association in January of this year to be as accurate as much more invasive cerebral spinal fluid testing. So usually you had to go in and get a spinal tap to see if you had this particular tau protein in your body indicative of the damage, this scar tissue basically that forms in your brain to identify early dementia as early as possible so that you can start treating it earlier. And it's called P-Tau-217. And here's a study that was published in JAMA. The average age of the 786 participants was 66 years old. And the study suggested that it would be valid for predicting risk in people much younger than this as accurately as having a much more invasive spinal tap. So, and again, unfortunately, most doctors don't order this test. You can always ask if you have a great relationship with your doctor and your doctor is young, especially, and even more so, a woman. I'll be sexist. There, I said it. Women doctors are more likely to be progressive, in my experience, than old white guys like me. And these tests that can identify early signs of dementia early enough to treat them with better food, exercise, and supplements are, are things like P-TAU-217. P is in Paul, T-A-U-217, the one I just spoke of, and also P-TAU-181, uh, phosphorylated tau proteins. These are basically proteins that identify scar tissue that is beginning to form in the brain as a result of normal brain cell turnover, they're not. it's not like identifying a bacteria or some kind of infection. These are things that are always present. They're a function of normal brain cell turnover. But if they're elevated, then it gives you an indication and hopefully a motivation to do something different. So I can order these tests for a little over $200 through LabCorp. It really should be available and covered by insurance by your general practitioner. But I'm providing this information for those who are frustrated and are properly motivated and can't get it ordered. These tests are available and extremely useful for identifying, is it worth the expense? And will they motivate you to change your lifestyle, to eat better food and exercise more, and maybe take a few supplements to, to flood your brain with the nutrients it needs to heal itself? You've been listening to safe, effective, natural solutions to almost any health challenge and early cognitive impairment and dementia is one of the greatest challenges for so many people. I'd love an opportunity to identify the specific ways that someone you are concerned about could potentially reverse the effects of dementia. Email me with your questions and please tune in next Friday at 4 p.m. right here on KDAR 98.3 FM. Have a fantastic weekend.
You've been listening to Safe, Effective Natural Solutions with Dr. Todd Binkley. If you have a health question you want discussed on the show, email your health questions to Dr. Binkley at binkleyhealingcenter.com. Take advantage of this opportunity to ask questions for yourself and for your loved ones because our health matters. Join him next Friday at 4 p.m. for safe, effective natural solutions right here on 98.3 The Word, KDAR.